time to uh, talk Aintry Grand National Weekend. It is tomorrow at Aintry. John Duggan of OffTheBall.com is joining us. John, thanks a million. Dave, good morning. And Johnny and... Kenny, yeah, full house this morning. Happy Grand National weekend. <laughs> God, you know, you know, he got up a bit later than we did. You're full of, full of the joy. Well, it's actually just acting. <laughs> um, be miserable when I go into the office. Um, there are going to be an awful lot of people who really only have a flutter on a horse on Gold Cup Day and Grand National yes. Day, dusting off the betting slips this weekend. There are, as we speak, probably people running around the offices up and down the country with their sweepstake pages in hand, trying to get the scissors out and cut it all up and get everybody involved, which is what you do on Grand National Weekend. Um, this is obviously a bigger deal to like yourself and Johnny than it would be, say, for myself and Kenny. But my biggest memory of the Grand National, unfortunately, is the race that never was. Monty three, yeah, the void the, race, uh, the the fall starts, the Did void you have race. S? Well, I was only thirteen, so okay. I wasn't. I don't think. I don't think I'd backed a horse myself. What yeah. when when you think Grand National? What's the first thing that springs to mind for you? Um, I think it's West Tip in nineteen eighty six. <laughs> we are going back a while. And I had a fiver on and went to school on Monday and told everybody that I backed it, and was honest about it. And um, then when I was in college, in first year in college, I really fancied Laura Galen in 1997. That was the year of the bomb scare. They ran it on the Monday and it won by half the track. And that actually got really got me hooked into horse racing, that race. And uh, in recent years, um, luckily enough, I had this brainwave to tip Aurora's encore at 80 to 1. Did my money on the Friday. Uh, I said, I'm not going to bother back and I just tipped it. And then it won at 80 to 1 and it was 100 oh. to 1 in the morning. So it was great because all these people on Twitter were going that they loved me and you know they wanted to buy me drinks and all this and they paid for their property tax, but I didn't have any money on it myself. <laughs> um, well, at least they paid for their property tax. Yes, well that's it. So the government uh, good, good, Johnny, Johnny, good I'm sure you've got, you got great memories of it. Yeah, like uh, funnily enough, it's not a race that um, excites me as much at all as others. Um, I I, uh, I I'd be more intrigued by the good flat races and uh, the Cheltenham to me. Aintree's not a meeting that really does it for me. Um, you see, there's a complete lack of Irish runners this week because basically Gordon Elliott and Willie Mullins are in this brawl to win the title over here, and they've they pretty much had more runners in the Ryanair Gold Cup. Um, than the entire Aintree meeting, or thereabouts anyway. They had nine between them, and that was... So why thing. is that? You put that down to the, the fist fight over here for the trainer's title? Yeah, they basically want to win the title, and um, Willie kind of... Can they not juggle both, as they would have they done can, at They can, but if they've to, it's very, very hard for horses who run at uh, Cheltenham to run at Aintree and Punchestown. It's, it's, it's asking a hell of a lot. It'd be like playing three soccer matches in three okay, consecutive Okay, so it's a resources months. issue. Um, it's resource, yeah, and this this meeting is kind of, because Irish racing is so strong now, this meeting is kind of falling in between. I mean, some of the novice races this week, grade one races, are pretty poor. Um, but the national itself has obviously a massive uh, Irish interest. And um, I suppose my memory would be Bobby Joe winning it, because Bobby Joe was owned, like, literally down the road from me. And um, it was Bobby Burke, whose brother ran the pub that I used to drink in when I was... Um, Twelve. When I was <laughs> just about legally able, Woody. I, I was telling my mother I was uh, going down to the to play a few games of pool, and she bought it for about six months. Um, well, I'm looking at John's notes here, peering over your shoulder. That's 19 years ago this week that Bobby Joe won the national. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out what age you are, but I'm pretty I was sure 17. you were not 50, legally 16, able. 16, 17. But but anyway, he was he was uh, he was owned locally in Mount Bellew, and um, because I'm from a race in Backwater, that was actually a big deal. And we have in our county presenting Percy as a Gold Cup candidate next year. There which you go. Is a big deal. But uh, so look, never, what are we looking at? So I've uh, never I've never backed the winner of the race. Just so. All these people who think I can tip horses. He's never useless. Why'd you invite him to the show this morning? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to tip a winner, um, John. You know to the I mean? uninitiated amongst us, be broken, <laughs> the method for choosing a horse for the National John for a lot of us will be pin the uh, race card on the wall, pick a dart up, and just fire it at the wall and just back whichever uh, horse you manage to land it on. If you like the colours of the <coughs> horse, if you like the jockey's name, for example, if you like the horse's name. Is that the case? Is it a lottery? Can any of the 40 in the field tomorrow win this race, or is, is it a little more nuanced than that? It's a bit more nuanced, Dave and everybody. Um, the first ever winner of the race in 1839 was called Lottery. Uh, <laughs> so that's an interesting stat, but uh, I always find that the Grand National is about a few things. It's about being able to jump the unique fences at Aintree. Now, the fences are not as forgiving as they were back, say, in the 70s, if you remember watching Red Rum and Crisp and that on the, on the, on the YouTube. Mm. Um, uh, but you need to stay. It's four miles, two furlongs. It's, it's the longest race that they have. 
Uh, you need to be able to stay. The stamina is important. You need to be able to jump well, and you need to be able to have sometimes a little bit of class. You know, the better horses that can that can be able to go up with the pace, but also show stamina are the ones that can win. Weight generally in recent years, because it's changed a little bit, that the class horses have generally performed better in recent years. But for a long period of time. A horses under 11 stone were generally the ones that were favoured and I think that the softer the ground and the ground is, is a little bit soft this week will bring a, you know a lower weighted horses into it so for example I've gone through the 40 horses I probably net and you know narrowed it down to about 10 and then I'll try yeah, and so it's almost like trying to pick a winner of the Masters you can get rid of the yes past champions who are over the, the hill get pit rid of the rookies yes and it's not that hard to pick a winner it's not that hard to pick a winner we know you Patrick that. Reed. look he backed Patrick Reed. let's get that <laughs> yeah, out that's what yeah. Um, well, no, we'd expect that from you, though. <laughs> Kenny's a bit of an outlier when it comes to this. So you're looking at the 40, and for various reasons, reasons yes. uh, the process of elimination, you've cut it down. I've got it down to about 10. Okay. Um, generally, if I find lads, if I've got three or four, if I can't see it, sometimes I don't have the winner. I think I've had the winner five times in 21 of the races. So That's, that's good going. If, that if, if, I, if I can see it, it's it's... Then I kind of feel like I'm, I'm nearly there, but if I can't see it clearly, it means I might not might not see it. Okay. So is there a grey, John? Come on, me. Is there what's the best place grey in the horse in the in the race? Uh, well, there's um there's this really good story. Uh, always, ba always back to grey. Balde Zeal. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> Katie Walsh, and uh, a lady rider has never won the race. As her husband trains us, Ross O'Sullivan. Um, huge money for it all week. It's uh, right. seven year old grey Balde Zeal. Uh, right. Sixteen I'm on to it. one. I'm on it. So. Yeah, that, that's definitely a horse that, that will love the ground, will stay. But it's a seven-year-old. And once again, if you know your stats, a seven-year-old has not won the race, Kenny, since 1940. Any reason why uh, shouldn't a seven-year-old? Uh, just uh, uh, stamina. Really? Stamina. Yeah, and stamina. And yeah. yeah. And, you know, like Older horses are better be able to do, like to, to stay the four miles and two for long. It's a war of attrition, yeah. Okay, so Johnny... I've you're on the. You're looking at the top of the betting CRS. So you're really going out in a limb. He's never back the winner. He's, he's never back change. the winner. It's a waste of time. Let Go me, back to John. Let me give my man. Total recall. Go for it. <laughs> Sell it. I've looked at the forty runners. I've narrowed it down to forty-four. Forty-eight. <laughs> there are four reserves. Um, right. Annabelle Fly was third in the Gold Cup. On that run, he's very well in. Um, He's a bit short in the betting for me because I think Total Recall might well have beaten him. He fell in the Gold Cup. This has been his plan. He was taken from Sandra Hughes to Desi Hughes, after, or rather to Willie Mullins after Desi Hughes uh, passed. Sandra took over the horse. Willie has seen this massive improvement from him. Jumps very well. He would have been Ruby Walters' ride. Ruby's injured. So Paul Townend will ride him. He's around 10, 12 to 1, but he's a huge chance, I think. See you at midnight um, has been bought by New Connections. Um, Maybe a horse you'd back for the name alone. Great. See you, see you at the end. Is it great? Is it a great? Is it a great? <laughs> no, it's not. Forget it. Not there, interested. There he is, sir. Uh, not great. No, he's not, no. So see you at midnight. Um He's a, he's a classy horse actually who since his novice days hasn't done much race and could be very well handicapped um, last year's race we had a massive run from a uh, horse who's going to be fancied again black line um, just not sure if he got home just not sure if he actually does get this trip and as as John was saying it's, it's, it's a very hard race to actually um, tick all the boxes because you have to be prominent most of the time you have to jump and, and you have to keep going it's, it's almost like running a marathon at a 15 mile race pace like and consistently just keep going for over 26 miles. So it's asking a lot. Um, a few others I give a mention to Gavin Cromwell as a trainer that I've had put plenty of faith in myself and he has Raz de Marie. Um, I rang him last night and uh, he was having a McDonald's. So I said, you know, and if the horse wasn't. No, well, no, he wasn't. Um, but he was having a, a happy meal. <laughs> he was on the way to Hollyhead with the horse, and he said, if ever he is going to win this race, it's this year because he never would get his ground apart from this year. It's a soft ground national, which is quite unusual. And Rasmussen won the Welsh national. He's 13 years of age, which bizarrely gives you a better chance than if you were seven. Effectively. Oh, why? Uh, it does. It, the veterans go fine in this race. Remember? So that Razu Marie, we're looking at 33s, John. Yeah, he has a chance. He, he's, he's actually, funny enough, he's not the biggest horse in the world for these fences, but he jumps great. He's a real, really likeable horse. Um, so I give him a bit of a squeak, but I do like I do like Total Recall. I think he ticks plenty of boxes. And uh, his trainer has won the race before, unlike the Gold Cup and the Irish National, which he hasn't won. John? Well, of the eight that have uh, shortlisted, all of Johnny's are in that eight. Okay. Wow. Uh, we're thinking right. we're great minds, Johnny. Happy days. See, Kenny, um, these dudes know what they're talking Talk is cheap. We'll say. And Kenny's in this picture with the grey as well. It's no, Balde Zeal. Um, see you at midnight <coughs> is the one I'm on. The, I mean, I might I mean I'm going to write about. I'm going to write a preview on offtheball.com 
probably tomorrow morning. Um, but at the moment, see you at midnight is the one I like at 16 to 1. He will go on any ground. He uh, beat uh, Bristol to Mai and he beat Black Lion earlier in his career. He's had a few injury problems. He's 10 years of age now. He was third in a Scottish National and maybe a bit too much use was made of him in that race. Brian Hughes takes the ride tomorrow and I think that he is a prominent racer. He's a sound enough jumper and I think he's definitely capable of 10 stone 11 of reaching the frame see you at midnight. Right now he would be my pick. A few that I would put into the mix as well. Um, Annabelle Fly would completely agree with, like he's got uh, very well weighted on that run in the Gold Cup. Um, we saw Mike Bite run very well yesterday and win. Um, Minella Rocco, I've always really liked. I think he'll like he he stays top, for, top weight, top yeah. weight, which would be very difficult. I don't think he's been done since nineteen seventy seven. Um, would probably prefer better ground. Uh, we'll say the trip though has got a bit of class has beaten Native River twice beat him in the four miler beat him in the Gold Cup last year Native River is the current Gold Cup champion so Manella Rocco is a horse I cannot discount Black Lion I think has got too much weight Total Recall it has to be part of the, the calculations uh, Razda Marie was also my my list I'm speaking to Robbie Power this morning I'll get a bit more sense of, of his chances um, and he's actually I think improved with age and, and for moving yard to Gavin Cromwell's Razda Marie will stay all day if he can jump around um, a couple of horses that are completely out of form, but are class acts on their day at massive prices. Carlingford Lock is 50 to 1, has won two Irish Gold Cups, one at Leperstown, one at Punchestown, off 11 stone now, 12 year old. And Volster Lido, who Henry de Bromhead says is working well, um, seems to have completely lost the plot. But at 80 to 1, this is a grade one winner, Volster Lido and Carlingford Lock. You'd have to take your chances that they'd be coming back to form. That's why you couldn't really be backing with any confidence. If they, if they got into rhythm, and Carlingford Lock is trained by John Kiley in Waterford, John Kiley up until recently and could still be doing this, was riding out this horse every morning, 79 years of age. Oh my God. He's riding one of the biggest horses you're going to get in, in, in racing, riding him out every day. An absolute legend of the game. Um, himself and his brother Paddy riding out against each other. There's a great photo of the two of them in their late 70s riding up the gallops. <laughs> and if he were to win, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be a more popular winner. He's, no. a, he's a true legend of the game and age is but a number. And he had a winner yesterday in the last race. I don't race, know why so. I looked at you when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair point. John, I want to get a tip for today from you in a moment. But Kenny, last word on the National. You have the two boys here. You will not be surrounded by any more expertise between now and the off tomorrow. So is there, And one more question. John's giving me horse. Hands. He's giving me horse. He's giving it to me, John. He's giving me the grey. Balazil. You're uh, pinning your colours firmly to the grey mask. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I was my dad. My dad always, I always remember my dad saying, growing up, let's back the grey. So, so you're a big desert. And you're even wearing grey. Well, it's funny enough, I never used to watch this just as a, on a, a sidebar, like playing football Saturday. For a long period of time, I never saw the National Alive for the four o'clock. Coming off a half time court for the lads coming down the tunnel, you can never be poking their heads into the players' lounge, maybe just to get. Uh, the, the start of the race just in that small period in between going into the dressing room and coming back out again. But for a long period of time, just never got the opportunity to actually see the national. So okay. you'll watch it tomorrow? I will watch it tomorrow, yeah. You game on. Man City, Green 5 o'clock, rolls into the Man City game. Uh, Tottenham ever. straight after. Off the back of the Masters, the oh, derbies last weekend. Oh my, did I, tell you you uh, the, did I tell you won the Masters, John? Did I, did um, I mention that already? Have you spent the read money or are you going to invest it in the grey? <laughs> are you back, back read, did you? Nah. Didn't know that. Don't leave, leave it now. We've At least somebody is happy he won the national. It was a great bet. It was a great bet. A 50 to 1 bet doesn't come around very often, Kenny. So just in, indulge. Yeah, I'm indulge. I'm glad you're pleased for me. Not too many people in, are around indul this indul table. Indulge, indulge. Thank you. Have, some, ice. Oh, have some ice cream. <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sick of Snow Falcon turning up and not winning races. I don't know what you think, Johnny. <laughs> so today's the day. Today, hopefully, is the day. These English novices are They're not no great. good. They're no good. Uh, two, what the what two, time is it? 250 Snow Falcon at 8 to 1 was third behind Yanworth and Super Sunday last year. Is running in a three mile race um, uh, chase today, and I think he's got a he's got a good chance in officer's chase. Was unlucky in the Irish Grand National. Will go on the ground. No meat is in good form in the last couple of weeks. Snow Falcon at eight to one has to be backed each way. But I'll see you at midnight, folks, for the Grand National. Wow! There you go. You heard it here Boom. first, Johnny and uh, John. Thanks a million, boys. Dave. We hope you're right.